Hey, what's up? This is Václav and this is my channel about home automation. I automate my house and uh, I'm sharing what I do with uh, the others. So you could find some inspiration and uh, you could uh, repeat after me and maybe even improve it. Uh, and I get comments from you under my videos. Sometimes you think when you say that it helped you, which is great. Uh, sometimes you ask questions and uh, I do my best to answer them. But sometimes I get rather complaints that uh, this is too smart for you, that I'm making everything too complicated, that I go straight to programming sometimes. Like on the last video, I get a comment that uh, y you find using blueprints too complicated, that uh, it's not intuitive. And that surprised me a little bit because I thought blueprints, they were actually pretty easy. You just click import blueprint, create automation, you just select from one or two options and everything works. I don't know how to make it much easier. I thought it was a rather genius from Home Assistant to make them because this is making the automations accessible to general audience. You know, before you had to go into YAML and write all of those different commands and make sure you have the indenting right. With the blueprints, you just click a few options. Everything is well described, documented. The options are limited. So if that's too advanced, then uh, I don't know. But then sometimes I get questions from the other side. They're very specific, very detailed, very sophisticated. I wouldn't even consider myself doing things like monitoring how uh, when I do garbage collection, whether the what's actually happening with the movement of the container, you know, doing some object recognition of the container and see whether it's been taken out, whether it's empty, monitoring its position. That would really get uh, very nerdy. So I don't know which way to go. What, who are you? Who are, why are you watching this video? Uh, what are you expecting from me? I probably wouldn't be too good in making it more basic. I have tried in the past. But at the end, this is not the way how I make my house. So I would be explaining you something I don't do myself. And I find actually my videos are uh, good when I actually share my own experience and not something that I think that should work, but I don't do that. Something I believe in. Uh, if I look at uh, my channel statistics in analytics, I see that 13% uh, of uh, you are from United States. That makes sense. Netherlands, 6%. Uh, it's the home of home assistant, so it makes sense as well. Poland surprised me. A lot of people from Poland, more than from United Kingdom. So that, these are interesting things, but it doesn't tell me anything about uh, what you're looking for in here. Uh, on the left side about the subscribers, I see that 81% of you are not subscribed. So you found the video through searching, you're not regular subscribers. That might explain why sometimes you might get confused that you found something you were not expecting or looking for. 19% are subscribers. So I don't know if it's high or low. I would obviously wish to have more subscribers. So. Uh, if you like my videos, just click and hit and subscribe, please. But uh, other than that, uh, age and gender. This one is, I guess it's very sad, in fact. Look at that. Most of the people are male, 35 to 44 years old. Okay, that, so the age, I'm not a teenager myself, and these are probably people who are uh, improving their homes, or probably the younger ones, they wouldn't be into building their homes. That makes sense. But 100% male, what have I done to female? Am I offending you or where are you girls? Are there any girls watching this video? If, if so, can you please uh, say hello in the comments? Because 100%, I don't like that. I mean, I believe very much in equality. I do not differentiate between gender or race or religion. But then my channel is for 100% male. But anyhow, it doesn't explain uh, again 
what you're looking for in here. I'm thinking about myself. How do I uh, consume YouTube? You know, sometimes I watch videos because I'm looking for some how-to instructions that I can follow. That's one option. But sometimes I just watch videos. For example, I like to watch Japanese carpenters. Can I do that? Can I repeat it? <laughs> I wish I can, but uh, I'm, I'm barely scratching the surface. But I just love watching the, the professionalism and the craftsmanship. I'm watching someone who uh, knows what to do, get some inspiration. But I guess my channel is not like that. I mean, <clears throat> working with wood, it's just beautiful. I also watch the channels uh, about sailing. Uh, I mean, I, I have a I have a skipper's license myself, but uh, again, I I wouldn't dare to do what those guys do. I mean, crossing Atlantic single-handed, I'm just leisure sailing somewhere in Mediterranean, so that's something I'll be like really scared. And obviously, watch the tech channels like the MKBHD and his dream studio. Uh, am I going to have a similar studio like him? <laughs> Definitely not, but he's so professional. I find so much inspiration there. Sometimes I get inspiration in like a lifestyle channels. Becky and Chris, I, I love the way how they do storytelling and how professional they prepare for the videos. As well as them flying the helicopter. That's <laughs> great. Uh, I would love to do that. Obviously, I would never have a license and I would never uh, have a helicopter, but it's, 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 I can dream about it, right? Mm -hmm. But there are other professionals I learned from as well. Uh, Alex and his cooking show, the way how he takes things to the perfection, uh, I admire it very much. And the way how he interacts with the camera, uh, that's great. Speaking of cooking shows, Sam the Cooking Guy, such a fun. Uh, the way how he interacts with his two sons and, and the way how he makes his shows and it's very simple and approachable yet delicious he can sell very much what he's doing that you would even uh, you even have to try it because you go like that doesn't sound complicated I could do it as well and I, and I love that and I would like to repeat some of those things so maybe some of you are watching those videos like yeah this is cool uh, but you would not uh, consider yourself doing it. Uh, but I hope that big part of you are watching them and they are actually finding them as a, some helpful instructions that you, you, you can follow and maybe improve on what I do and, and do it better. So, so that may be part of it. But this group of people is probably very limited, right? Um, I think it's general about the automation. In the past, the automation, uh, it was like a few guys tinkering with Arduino and buying sensors and soldering them and, uh, you know, playing with MQTT and programming everything, which is cool. And this is how Home Assistant started, right? With the Raspberry Pi uh, connecting everything and orchestrating all of those sensors. Uh, but this this is very limited uh, target audience, and if the auto home automation was limited to this group of people, it would be probably a very small market, and the products wouldn't be so generally available. So obviously, all of those companies like Google or uh, I don't know Philips or all of those big players, uh, they probably wouldn't spend uh, their money for it. So this is why they needed to broaden the market, making it more accessible. And this is why they are making the solutions that are for like a consumer products rather than uh, hobbies. Uh, and I'm afraid this might not be my target audience because consumer products... Let me take this Sonoff uh, switch with a display, for example. Uh, I created this video in the past and, and you can watch it in here. Uh, that I, I took this uh, Son of Basic and I uh, integrated it with the uh, ITIT uh, 
OLED display and I have created this small HMI and I 3D printed the frame and I have it next to my door and it does exactly uh, what I want but it took some soldering and configuring and even like a scripting I wouldn't call it programming and it does exactly what I want I mean it, it shows lots of different information from all kinds of different sensors and I love it and I keep improving it what they've done in here, they've done something similar, but for this to work, uh, you need to have this EVLink application and it can only show what is in this EVLink application. So if you buy the sensors from Sonoff, like the motion sensors or, or switches, uh, you'll be able to see those widgets in here and control them. And you'll be able to automate them uh, through the EVLink application, only those things that are Sonoff and Sonoff knows them. Uh, so if I would like to bring in my own uh, sensors or information, for example, about the presence of people in house or temperature sensors or whatnot, I wouldn't be able to integrate them in here easily. So for me, there will be a limitation. I would try to somehow, I don't know, you could, you could integrate it over the internet uh, with uh, Philips Hue, but okay, I have uh, Zigbee, but I don't have Philips Hue. I'm using uh, some again another platform for Zigbee that I can integrate different sensors all over the place, not limited to Philips. So I wouldn't be able to integrate them in here. So either I could accept this limitation and say uh, I will only. Uh, buy things from Sonoff and integrate them in here and, and I'll be happy with what Sonoff offers to me. But I wouldn't like that limitation. Or I would try to make it a little bit more custom to fit my needs, but then it would get really complicated. So I would end up in saying, uh, I like the hardware, but I would replace the firmware with something like ESP Home and I would then take the display and I would reload the HMI with my own custom layout. And this is the video I would make and I probably will make. But then you would say again, yeah, this is too complicated. It doesn't have to be that complicated. If you would just take the display as it is and use it, it will be simple. But I would not make such video. I will make a video saying that's the limitation. I don't like it and that's why I will change that. Same thing with Home Assistant. You could take Home Assistant and uh, just uh, currently we can buy it on the box. You will turn it on, it'll install, discover all the uh, sensors you have and you can just use it as is. But then for me it's not home automation, it's like a remote control. I can control my lights from my mobile phone or maybe by voice. Um, that's not enough for me. I'd like to do something a little bit smarter. Maybe it's great for you, and maybe this is what I want to do. But if you want to do just that, I think the home assistant might be a little bit too big for, for the job. Maybe you'll be okay with using uh, just some uh, Alexa or, or, or whatnot personal assistant. It will also discover all of those smart lights and sockets and sensors, and you'll be able to control it from there. What I like about the Home Assistant is that uh, you could make it that simple, but also uh, you could add and customize it and add your own custom integrations and your own custom controls. And you can keep extending it and customizing it. This is what I like about Home Assistant. I hope it'll stay there because I see it. There is a risk that uh, as those uh, products like the uh, the personal assistants and the different automations like the EV link uh, or the, the different uh, uh, Tuya ecosystem allow <clears throat> or, or are, made, are, are actually made uh, more accessible and they have more and more features. Home Assistant will try to compete with them and by doing that, it will actually make compromises and it might actually get 
simpler and simpler for this broad audience of users because they will say, oh, Home Assistant is too complicated, too complex. I'd like something much simpler, such as uh, Google Assistant. But then Home Assistant is not going to be interesting for me. So I will then probably freeze on some older version and keep using that. So this is something which uh, I keep thinking about and I'm really uh, thankful that so far it looks like Home Assistant allows for both. So it, it keeps this balance of being it uh, everything automatic and out of the box, but at the same time they allow for this extendability and customization. So this is my take on Home Assistant and my videos and why I am sort of on this uh, uh, advanced uh, level of Home Assistant. S sounds a little bit arrogant. I don't think it's advanced at all. I think there's much more advanced things I could do with Home Assistant. I, I could do videos about how to do programming in Python. I can do a lot in uh, in some Python scripting. and uh, So I'm staying in, I guess, intermediate level, I would call it. But I guess it's still to advance for some of you. So I guess I owe you this uh, explanation uh, why am I making everything too complicated. I think it's by my choice. I understand that Home Assistant could be simpler and I make it appear it's, it's complicated. And uh, so if you have this feeling if I'm making bad image for Home Assistant that is too complicated, I'm sorry for that, but I just wanted to make it clear for you I'm focusing on this custom complicated part of Home Assistant. So I think I'm repeating myself over and over again. So I will stop the video here and uh, I'll see you on the next video where I'm going to take the home automation to the next level. Bye.